Well, good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to our service today on the day of Pentecost. And if you're watching online, you're also very welcome. We're glad that you're able uh, to join us. Now, it is the day of Pentecost, that significant day in the church calendar when the apostles received the Holy Spirit and went from being fear-filled to being fearless, full of courage and boldness to proclaim the good news. So we pray today that the Holy Spirit would come, that we would know his presence amongst us here in church or watching online, that he would fill us also with that same courage and that same boldness to go from this place and tell others the good news of forgiveness and mercy found in Jesus. And I want to encourage you this morning in our, in our hymns, as we sing our hymns, in our liturgy as well. Everything, of course, is relating directly to uh, the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. I encourage you to in, engage in this service as best and that you can. All right. We're going to turn to our order of service. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. As we worship you, fill us with your Spirit. As we listen to your word, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your Spirit. As we long for your empowering, fill us with your Spirit. Breathe on us breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak to us wisdom of God. Bring strength, healing, and peace. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this day of Pentecost. And we pray, Lord, that you would come in the power of your Holy Spirit and minister to us here in person in church, and even those watching online as well. Give us a real palpable sense of your presence with us this morning. Bless our time of worship. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand to sing our opening hymn of worship, which we'll sing through twice. I will enter these gates with thanksgiving in my heart. We stand to sing. Lord, forgive us when we have closed our hearts to his renewing power, 
Lord have mercy. The Spirit leads us into the truth of Christ. Lord, forgive us when we have closed our minds to learning anything new. Christ, have mercy. The Spirit makes Christ known in the world. Lord, forgive us when we have failed to bear witness to the gospel of Christ. Lord, have mercy. For all who seek to turn from sin and walk in newness of life, may the Father of all mercies forgive us, cleanse us from our sins, and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for this, the day of Pentecost. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles, with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm going to invite Lucy now to come to our lectern here to the microphone. She's going to bring us our gospel reading this morning. Thank you. A reading from Acts chapter 1 and beginning to read in verse 1. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were, set, now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? And continuing to read from verse 12. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have, too, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. The crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I have to say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your younger men will see visions. Your old men will, see, will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to you, Lord. Thank you, Lucy. We're going to stand to sing again. And we're singing, Spirit of the Living God, fall afresh on me. We we'll sing this through twice.
hear what you would say to us today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to take your seats, folks. I just want to ask you that bit. Now, I, I, would, I would suggest that if any of our kids want to come forward, now there's two pews, there's not that many kids, there's two pews, and you could split into the two front pews, and then you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing and hear everything I'm saying. So would you like to come up? Uh, either that or I get like a, a much higher table. I said just do a, just do a yep. split. Yep, yep, two front pews. Elena and Alex, you go into that one then. How's about that? Is that good? Okay, um, don't worry, I'm not going to keep this too long. It's really small. It doesn't be small. Okay, so today is the birthday of the church. Uh, and maybe perhaps we should have a birthday cake. Anybody like birthday cake? I like birthday. Have you seen the birthday cake on the back of the service sheet? Have you noticed it? Good for you, good for you. So today is called Pentecost, and that means 50th, as in 50 days since, since the celebration of Passover. Uh, it is known as the birthday of the church because it is when the disciples of Jesus suddenly went, as I said earlier, from being fear-filled to being fearless. From being afraid of lots of things that might happen to them, to being afraid of nothing. They became, they became courageous and committed, full of passion and purpose and power. Now, how did this all suddenly happen? Well, I'm going to explain. It was all, of course, the, the work of the amazing Holy Spirit, who came upon these disciples at Pentecost as they waited for him in the upper room. Now you can all see that I have a fan with me this morning. It's my biggest fan. He's my biggest fan. Now on a hot summer day, an electric fan can really keep us cool. We use this at home. So we do. And it gets hot in the summer. Uh, three days, normally, in August. Uh, now how does a fan keep us cool? How does a fan keep us cool, Ella? Uh, and the wind blows in the yeah, it blows, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It keeps us cool by blowing air. Now if we get one to the one, I demonstrate it. You're far enough away, you'll still be able to see it and maybe feel it a little bit. Now, of course we can't actually see the air that's coming out of the fan, but we can tell that it's working. So in fact there are different ways that we can tell that the fan is working. Uh, one way is obvious, as I've tied uh, these, well I didn't put Bonnie tied these, because uh, she's very good at stuff like that. So we've, we've tied these streamers onto the fan, and though, even though we can't see the air, we can obviously see that, that the fan is working as it's blowing the streamers. Another way that we can know the fan is working is that we can, we can feel it. I can feel it on my hands, you don't take my word for it. We can feel it, we can feel the, the air on our face or on our hands. We can't, we can't see the air, but we can feel the air, okay? And also, we know that the fan is working because you can't hear it. We can hear the sound of it. We can hear the sound of it working. Can you hear? Can you hear? Alex, can you hear? Say yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we know that it's working because we can we can actually hear it when we're really, really quiet. Well, the Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, Jesus' followers were all gathered together in one place, and God sent the Holy Spirit to give them power to talk about Jesus. Now, they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, so how did they know that the Spirit was there? The Bible says that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. They could hear the sound of the wind, just as we can hear the air blowing from this fan. Then the Bible tells us that they saw what seemed to be flaming tongues of fire that rested on their heads. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could see the flaming tongues of fire. Just as we can see these red ribbons. Think of red ribbons, think of tongues of fire. Finally, the Bible tells us that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel his power. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, he gave them the ability to speak in languages that they'd never even learned before. Wouldn't that be handy in, uh, in school, wouldn't it? 
You had to learn French that you didn't actually have to learn it. You could just automatically, you could just automatically say it. Anybody good at languages in school? What do you learn in school, Alex? What languages? Do you, do you learn any languages? No. Not yet? Not yet. That's for the big school, isn't it? Would you like to learn languages? No. <laughs> love your honesty. Love your honesty. I was terrible at languages in school. Terrible. Uh, I, just, I just couldn't seem to get it at all. But the Holy Spirit was able to give these men the ability to speak in languages that they never knew. That's how they knew the Holy Spirit was there, because they could feel his power. And the same thing happened to me many, many years ago in a service just like this, where I could feel the Holy Spirit just come upon me, and I could feel the Holy Spirit's power. And I left that service that day, and even though I had a, a huge fear of public speaking, two weeks later I was in High Street Methodist Church, standing in the pulpit, speaking about my life. I couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but I could feel His power in my life. That's why I'm here today. Still nervous <laughs> after all these years. Still get nervous. I think that's going to be a good thing. Okay, we're almost finished. Okay, you're hanging on there. You're still okay. All good. Good. The Holy Spirit is still available to us today, and He is available to everyone who believes in Jesus because Jesus promised it. It was a promised gift from Jesus. And he gives us a power in our lives, in your life and my life, to see amazing things happen. You can see amazing things happen when we allow the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. You can, you can pray and see answers to your prayers. I, I, can, I can tell you this from experience. Of course, God decides the answers. Sometimes the answers are yes. Sometimes they're no. Sometimes they're not just, not, not just yet. But we can see answers to our prayers. And the Holy Spirit gives us the very presence of Jesus in our lives. We can't see him, but we can feel him on the inside. And he's always there for us, a faithful friend. So all we have to do, young or old, or somewhere in between, which I think I am, possibly, all we need to do is ask. We just need to ask God to fill us with his spirit. The Bible reminds us, ask and you shall, you shall receive. Knock and the door will be open to you. Just have to ask. If we want to be the faith-filled, fearless, courageous and powerful followers of Jesus, that we should be, and we just need to simply ask God for his Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, we're going to pray going to do something just a little bit differently. It's not weird or wacky. We're just going to close our eyes. And just going to turn your hands up like this. Okay? So we all close our eyes. And we just, when we turn our palms up, the reason why we turn our palms upwards is in an act of receiving. All right. We all come to church. And we all have different things going on in our lives. Some of us are struggling with, with different things. It could be anxiety, maybe. Worry. It could be stress. Could be a lot of things. Maybe we're maybe we're getting treatment for something at the moment. Maybe we need a touch of the Holy Spirit for healing, or to help calm us, or help to give us peace. The Holy Spirit is a comforter as well. And so we're going to pray. We're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come to us, each person, each individual, and just to fill us and touch us and help us with anything that we might be struggling with. Again, whether it's anxiety or stress or worry about ourselves or about someone else. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your wonderful and amazing love for each of us. And Father, we turn our hands upwards now in an act of receiving from you. And we simply pray, Holy Spirit, come. Come and minister to us. <coughs> Whatever's going on in our lives at this moment, Whatever our struggles are, whatever our worries are, whatever our fears are, we know you can help us. And so we give it to you to help us. Just come and move in our hearts and in our minds and bring us your peace. Help us to know today the amazing love of the Father and the power 
and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. <coughs> Help us, Lord. We go from this place today <coughs> to be a people who seek to be filled with your Spirit, not just today, on this day of Pentecost, but every day. <coughs> we know we see you at work in our lives. You give us the courage and the boldness to be faithful, fearless followers of Jesus. And tell others of the good news of the kingdom available and accessible to each and every day. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you. Guys, you can go and take your seats again. I get a little bit of feedback there. And I'll just move this over. Slide this back. Can I invite you please to stand as we affirm our faith in whom we believe and in what we believe as we join together in the words on our service sheet. We believe. We believe in God the Father who reveals his love to us in Christ. We believe in God the Son who pours out God's Spirit for us. We believe in the Holy Spirit who teaches us God's truth. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Folks, would you like to take your seats again? I'm going to invite, uh, we've got David and Gemma and Linda are going to come. And they're come, going to come and lead us in prayer, just here at the lectern. Thank you.
for the highest kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Oh man, thank you guys, you did so well, so well, thank you.
school in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.